Hi everyone, DFIR Noob here with my first video. For my first video, I wanted to talk about write blocking and its important in digital forensic investigations and analysis. Uh, before I do that, just a couple definitions here. I like to use the National Institute of Science and Technology or NIST's definitions. Uh, they do a pretty good job of keeping it succinct and straight. So one of the definitions they use is a device that allows investigators to examine media while preventing data rights from occurring on the subject media. Hmm. So that is a, a broad definition that essentially tells us that right protection uh, keeps data's integrity intact when moving the data from a host machine to an external storage device. Another definition to use is that write blocking is a tool that prevents all computer storage media connected to a computer from being written to or modified. And that's more or less when you're talking about a hardware write blocker, which is common in the field. A hardware write blocker is a device that would connect in between a host machine and an external storage device. And essentially when you're transferring data or making an image of let's say a host machine, and it's going to that external device, it's, it's transferring the data in read-only mode. So you can't alter the data in any way on that storage device it's being housed in. And that's very important, again, to prove the integrity that nothing was altered uh, from the original state that the host was found in. So that's hardware write blocking uh, briefly, but we're going to focus here more on the software, more specifically how to enable write blocking in the Windows operating system using the Windows Registry. And a Windows Registry is essentially a database that houses a lot of different options or settings for the various applications that the operating system has housed. Here we're going to open up the registry editor. I'm just going to hit the Windows Run command, and if you just type in regedit here, it'll open up the registry editor. Well, what we're focused on is the H key local machine. And from here, we want to go to the system, and then the current control set. And from here, we want to go to control. Now, the write blocking key that we want to enable is not does not yet exist. So if you go down, we're going to call it storage device policies. And everything is alphabetically here, so you don't see storage device policies yet. We can add a key. So if I just right click on control and I click on new, I want to add a new key. And I'm going to name it storage device policies. And we call it storage device policies because as the name implies, we are looking to write protect any storage device that would be attached to this machine. So USB, external hard drives, uh, SSDs, whatever it may be. Uh, so here we have the new key. And we want to right click in that blank area and create a new D word value. And we're going to call that write protect. And right now write protect is turned off. And we know that because the data is zero set at zero. If we right click on this and we modify it, change the value data to one, that's essentially the on key. On is one, off is zero. You know, it's strictly binary. So now that it's on, if I connect a USB, it'll be right protected. It's also important that when you're turning this on and off through the registry, that you don't connect the device prior to turning it on. If a device is already connected, it would not be write protected. This is only for any external media that would be attached to the computer after the write protection is turned on. So I'm going to just plug in a USB here to test this out. It opens right up. So we have this text document in there and test USB. It could easily be a forensic image or anything else on there. Uh, so first, let me try to add a file from the host machine called test host. If I just drag this into the USB I get this message, which tells me that write protection is working. So this disk is write protected. It's exactly what we want to see. A lot of companies will use this policy so their employees can't bring in their own personal and external devices and attach them to uh, company computers and transfer that company data onto a personal device. Uh, so here, we're just going to cancel. But now we try the reverse. So let me go into the document that was already on the USB. Test USB. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to add something to the text document. All right, but now I want to save it in the same place. 
because I want to save it back on this USB drive. It won't let me. That's because, again, the right protection is turned on. So if I tried, if this were a forensic image and I wanted to alter that image in any way from the device I had the image on, it would not let me because the right protection is on. So that's, again, the importance of right protection is to really uphold the integrity of any data you're working with. Um, should this be a criminal case or even a case you're dealing with with a privatized company, you want to ensure them that the integrity of the data is intact, that nothing was altered in any way because uh, it can really just essentially uh, disprove any any of your findings, your analysis. So that's it for the right protection for the registry editor. Uh, so I mentioned NIST earlier. NIST is a great resource, NIST.gov. Uh, it houses a lot of different publications on various digital forensic documents. I'll put a link in the video below. But uh, feel free to check it out because it's a, a great resource and a great tool for those of us you know, they're looking to make a career change or starting in the digital forensic field. Lots of great resources. So uh, like and subscribe below. I appreciate the, you checking this out.